Hello, I'm Olivia, and today we're going to be doing the YMCA cycle ergometry test. This is Kaylee, that's Juan, and this is Aiden. Before you get started with your YMCA cycle ergometry test, you're going to need a few pieces of equipment. Right here we have our stethoscopes. You have one earpiece, and then you have the two earpieces. That way you can have two personnel listening in on your test. Make sure you know how to put the stethoscopes in appropriately. The earpieces should be pointing forward and away from your face. And then the chest piece should be turned on during the test. Next we have our metronome. All you have to do is press the power button, turns on and produces a rhythm that keeps the cadence during the test. To adjust it, simply press the up and the down button. Next, you should have a clock with a minute hand and a second hand. The minute hand provides the time for the test, and the second hand allows the 15 second or 30 second count for a heart rate. Next, we have our sphygmomanometers or blood pressure cuffs. They come in four different sizes, which include the child size, the adult size, large adult, and the thigh. The thigh is rarely used, but just keep it around in case you have a participant that needs it. Um, on each sphygmomanometer, we have the pump, which puts air into the bladder of the cuff, the air release valve, which you can tighten and untighten, which allows the air to pass through the tube into the cuff, and then you have the, the gauge, which allows you to read the blood pressure. We also have a standing blood pressure cuff, it's useful in exercise tests, that way you don't have to keep looking at the participant's arm and grabbing this gut gauge, which is hard to do. Finally, you have the cycle ergometer. Our cycle ergometer is a Monarch, and in other labs you might have one like the Tunturi. The difference between these two is the flywheel, which is right here. Ours has a circumference of six meters, whereas the Tunturi comes with a circumference of three meters. The significance of that is that when you do the calculations for the power, it's going to be different. Where you, uh, after you calculate the power for each stage of the test, you're going to come here to the force plate, the force scale, and you're going to adjust the force by either moving the pendulum manually, by either moving the pendulum manually, like so, or you can come up here to the force knob, and you can twist it and that will either tighten or loosen the resistance. Other pieces of other pieces of this uh, machine that are notable are the bike seat and the handlebars as well as the pedals. You want to make sure to adjust it appropriately for each participant. Not everybody's the same in height, of course. Just simply loosen the handlebars, move it to the desired position, tighten. Then we have the bike seat. All you have to do is unscrew the knob, adjust it, and then simply put it back and tighten it. And that's how you get set up for the YMCA cycle ergometry test. Hi, good morning. The YMCA protocol is based on two to four stages. Uh, the first stage is 150 kgm per minute and 0.5 kgm based on the Monarch cycle, six meters of revolution times uh, the metronome of 50 beats per minute. Uh, the test is once you get your heart rate after the first stage, if it's below 80, you follow these protocol. If it's uh, between 80, 89, you follow these protocol. If it's 90 to 100, you follow this protocol. And finally, the heart rate is uh, above 100, you follow this protocol. Remember you take heart rate between 15 and 30 seconds of the second and third minute of the stage and you have to get a consecutive, um, two consecutive stages of heart rate between, consistent between five beats per minute of each other to use. If not, you have to go to the, to the next minute of the stage. The reason that we have different stages second, third, fourth stage in the heart rates is because different individuals have different lifestyles, whether you're more active or sedentary. If you're more active, your heart rate might be lower, so you can start off here. Or if you're more sedentary, your heart rate would be obviously more higher, so you would start off 
approximately like 300 kgm per minute. Um, if you have, based on 50 beats per minute of the metronome times the six meters for the mon monarch cycle, that's 300. And then times 0.5 kilograms equal 150 kgm per minute. And that's how you get your kgm. And if you wanted to get watts, then you would divide it by six. Will be 25 watts. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. What would Dr. J do? <laughs> okay, first we need to make sure that the bike is properly aligned to our participant. So could you see it over here, please? First we need to uh, readjust the bike seat. Find the participant's greater trochanter and make sure that the bike is aligned with it. Okay, should be about right. Now sit down with your bottom right here. Put the participants feet in the pedals. There should be a slight bend in the knee whenever this leg is down. Okay, that's perfect. Next we need to adjust the handlebars. Just loosen them wherever you're comfortable sitting at. There we go. Is that good? We need a slight bend in the elbow. Okay, that's good. Okay. So now we are ready to begin our YMCA cycle ergometry test. Prior to performing the test, we need to get a resting blood, rate, blood pressure and heart rate on the participant. We get the heart rate so that we can establish a norm and the blood pressure so that we know that the participant is responding normally to the test. So first we want to find, uh, we pre-measured her arm at 24.5 centimeters, so we're going to use a regular adult size. We line up the little artery arrow with the brachial artery. Make sure that the tight is secured. Make sure that the cuff is secured tightly on the arm. We're going to pin the gauge up here so that's easy to read. Make sure that the air valve is closed. We're going to put our stethoscope on. Make sure that the ear pieces are facing forward. Make sure it's on. Okay. We're going to hold the participant's arm. Line up the stethoscope on the brachial artery. Now we're going to pump it up to about 20 millimeters of mercury above what we expect, so to about 160 or 180. And then we're going to let it release the valve very slowly and listen for the first muffled sound. The first muffled sound is the systolic blood pressure, and then we're going to listen all the way down until the last sound, and that's a diastolic blood pressure. So here we go. Sure that's closed. Sometimes they're a little bit difficult. Okay, now it's closed. Pump it up to about 160 or 180. Release very slowly. Okay, so her blood pressure, her, or her pre blood pressure is about 100 over 62, which is very low. The norm would be about 120 over 80, so that's very good. Um, next, we're going to take the heart rate on the cuff. So, to do that, we uh, 
pump the valve up to about 20 millimeters of mercury above the diastolic, which was 60. So we're going to pump it up to about 80. We're going to hold it there, keep the valve closed, and hold it there for a 15 second count. And that's how we're going to get our heart rate. So here we go. Okay, so now that we have our heart rate, we take that number, times it by four, and that's your heart, yeah, that's your heart rate. We're gonna leave the cuff on since we have to take the blood pressure and heart rate at the second and third minute of every stage. Um, another option for heart rate is to take it on the radial artery using your two fingers and with the 15 second count, times it by four, and that's your heart rate. Um. All right, now that we have our participants situated on the cycle ergometer, we're ready to begin our test. I'm going to start the metronome at 50 beats per minute, and she can choose the left or the right foot to match with this beat. All right, she's chosen her right foot, and she's going to keep that pace throughout the entire quest. I'm going to put it right here and just keep it out of the way. During the first stage of the test, we're going to set her resistance to 0.5 kilograms or 150 kgms and she's going to maintain this pace for three whole minutes. We're going to take her heart rate and her blood pressure during the first two minutes. Now that it's been two minutes into the first stage, we're going to go ahead and take her blood pressure and her heart rate on the cuff. I got her first heart rate to be 23 beats per minute, which adds up to 92 beats per minute when you multiply it by four. So we're gonna stay on this stage for one more minute, then I'm gonna take her heart rate and blood pressure one more time. And if it's at a steady state, then we'll move on to the next stage. Now that it's three minutes into our test, we're gonna take her heart rate and blood pressure. All right, that time I got 24, which by four is 96 beats per minute. So that's within five beats. We can go ahead and progress to the next stage. Which, what will that be, Juan? Uh, that'll be 450 kgm or 1.5 kgs. All right, she's gonna hold this increased resistance for another two minutes and I'm gonna take her heart rate again and her blood pressure again. The increase in resistance should cause an increase in her heart rate. All right, two minutes into the second stage, I'm gonna go ahead and get, the, get her heart rate and blood pressure one more time. I got 27 that time, which is 108 for her heart rate, which seems to be normal for the increase in resistance. We're going to hold on to the stage for one more minute. If it's a steady state, then we'll go on to the next stage. Okay. Now that it's been three minutes into her second stage, we're going to take her heart rate and blood pressure again.
speed of 28, that adds up to 112 beats per minute. So that's, that is still within five beats of the previous number of 108 beats per minute. So we can go ahead and go to the next stage. What would that be one? <laughs> what would Dr. J do? I'm glad you asked. Can you go to 600 kgm or 2 kg? Thank you, Juan. We're going to hold this for another two minutes. All right, now that it's been two minutes into the third stage, I'm going to take your heart rate and blood pressure. You guessed it, again. Starting to feel that resistance. All right, her heart rate is now up to 30, which by four is 120 beats per minute. So we only have to reach for above 110 beats per minute during this test. So if we can hold this for the last third minute, then we'll be done with the test. Now it's the third minute of the test, and I'm going to take her heart rate one more time and her blood pressure for one more time. All right, that was 31, which adds up to 124 beats per minute, which is within five beats of your last measurement. So we can go ahead and stop the test. I'm gonna have Juan remove all the resistance from the scale. All right, we're just gonna have you cool down for a few minutes and check your blood pressure again, your heart rate, make sure that you're calming down, cooling down normally. Should I that two times? Two minutes or one minute. All right, now it's one minute after the test. I'm going to go ahead and take one more heart rate and blood pressure, make sure that the participant is, keep going. <laughs> is cooling down normally to the test. I'm going to take one more heart rate and blood pressure, make sure that she's cooling down properly. You can go ahead and stop the test. Your heart rate was at 27, which is 108, which means you're going down and cooling down at the proper rate. And that was the cycle ergometry test. Now that we've done the test, we are going to use the YMCA VO2 max estimation graph to estimate my maximum oxygen uptake. It's really easy. You just use your um, age predicted heart rate and draw a line. Then you plot your two steady state heart rates from the last two workloads, so mine was 450 and 600, and those were my two heart rates. You draw a straight line connecting there, and then follow it down, and that value is your maximum O2 uptake, and mine was in between 3.5 and 3.8, so we can say it was about 3.6 liters per minute.